The next person I'm going to introduce you to is Nella Brown. I've known Nella for a very long time, and one uh, story that stuck with me is that she fell in love with sound when she was listening to her father's cement mixer. And um, this was the very first recording she ever made. Um, we have to ask her, Nella, how old were you when you recorded the cement mixer? I, whenever I bought my first uh, audio recorder. I, but very young. And um, Nella became a saxophonist. She toured with a band of, uh, uh, it was an all-female band, correct, Nella? A very accomplished musician. And later on, uh, became a PhD student at uh, Queen Mary, uh, the Center for Digital Music. And she, um, she has since uh, been very active in galvanizing all women in technology, and particularly in music technology. And she's here to tell you more about G-Hack, an organization of, uh, well, girl hackers, uh, women in technology that he, she has founded. So welcome, Nella Brown. Thank you, guys. This is working, that's good. So, uh, uh, as Michaela said, uh, we kind of go a long way back, and she's kind of followed my way through uh, setting up G-Hack and doing various activities with it. So, what is this G.Hack? Uh, is uh, basically, we've kind of set up this women-only, supportive kind of a hacking and experimenting environment, uh, and it was based on all the sort of female PhDs uh, that I could find around my corridor at Queen Mary's University of London. And uh, sort of we jointly kind of came up with this same idea that it would be really good to have this kind of a space, regardless of how many of women do we have on our floor, to just kind of do some hacking, circuit bending, and kind of teach each other various skills that the the, the the other person had. So uh, we had, as throughout the last, since 2011, we had uh, all these sort of ladies come and do some various uh, projects with us. Some of them are already graduated. I'm hoping to submit in a few months' time, and some of the G-hackers that are with me as well. And so sort of thing, the, uh, the project is based at Queen Mary's, and then the new members come into the university and then get involved in all sorts of activities, and then they graduate and spread the word, and that's how it basically works. Uh, you can see the women's circle here, myself, Magda, Katja, and Patricia, who I'm going to call up. They're just there, just in a bit, so you can kind of see what they look like, because we are going to be doing a, a workshop tomorrow, so, uh, so you know who you need to talk to if you want to get into one of those. Some of the projects that we worked on is, as I was saying, we got commissioned to do a variety of installations, and then based on those installations, we kind of taught ourselves how the technology works. We put it together, and then we thought what we'll go and do, we'll go and do a workshop and teach other women how they can do the same thing. And so, so this kind of thing went on, and we sort of installed, then we tested some installations, did some research studies, did some workshops, did more commissions, and you can see sort of some of the pictures of, uh, of our work, and we even did some kind of heavy machinery uh, handling in the workshop that we have, which basically involved like cutting up some pieces of wood, doing some drilling, filling, painting, etc., etc. So uh, kind of a bit of electronics and a dirty work altogether. I'm going to just uh, show you a couple of projects very quickly. I think we have some sound. This is the first installation that we got uh, commissioned to do at the, almost at the inception of uh, G Hack in 2011. And it was first exhibited during the uh, VNA, which is Victoria and Albert Museum in London, Digital Weekend. And it's basically a map, sound map of London. We went around and we recorded loads of soundscapes around the tea houses in London. We chose around 100 different ones, and then we kind of boiled it down to a, a 33, which we found the most interesting ones in the 33 boroughs of London. This is kind of the map, and the teapot sits on it. It's got uh, uh, three infrared LEDs, there's a camera underneath, and we use the Reactivision software to track the movement of the teapot, and Max MSP to trigger the sound. So you'll just see a little bit of that, hopefully, in action. So as you can see, very simple interaction. And in this corner here, 
you can see how we had it installed it, uh, during the digital weekend at the V&A because usually they have around 10,000 visitors over like three days of the weekend and their families, uh, uh, kids from all over the world. So we had this little white chair set up so kids can climb up and they can just kind of move the teapot around and listen to the sounds. And we also had a leaflet where you can hear where the sound maps are coming from and where the soundscapes are coming from. So we also had another piece of paper that you can't see in the background where people were free to kind of note down some other new uh, places that we can go and record. And people were just like really freely drawing on the ground and gave us some uh, lots of new ideas for new soundscapes. Another project, uh, another installation that we got commissioned for last year by Digital Shortage Festival, it's, uh, it's called Light Touch. So for this particular one, we sort of hacked into um, commercial lasers, you know, the one that I could be using now to point to the screen. And so, because they're basically, you know, you can almost point them in your eye, but not for a long period of time. So we kind of hacked into them, rewired them, and then we set them up in, in a sort of architectural space. So you have kind of a, these instruments that you can play as you go through space. So it's kind of a collaborative music making with lasers in space, a bit of fun. And because Digital Shortage, again, is sort of visited by uh, kids and adults and all sort of ages and from all sort of backgrounds, it was a little bit of fun for them. We exhibited uh, after that at the uh, CMMR conference in Marseille and we also did a research study and we talked to people about how they sort of perceived what was going to happen when they touched the lasers when they moved through space. So I'm just going to play a little bit. So we had different colors, red, green and purple and different uh, sound synthesis. Okay, I guess that was a very short exit, but I, you get the idea. And also, I think, I don't know, for anybody who's ever played with kind of a lasers, uh, you, the, the, the reason why you can see this and the reason why this, everything is kind of a bit hazy is because you need to use something called a haze machine that creates all these kind of uh, uh, effects that look like you're in a rock concert. So that's a very, very important thing if you want to do something similar. So yes, yeah, so we've uh, uh, basically, we've kind of uh, managed to somehow rack up a huge amount of things uh, since we've, uh, one could potentially think that, you know, when we managed to fit in the, all the PhD work, going to the conferences, presenting and doing all that sort of stuff, but we did manage. And uh, so since 2011 until, well, this is us now, we've kind of uh, presented various pieces of work, we've did installations and workshops, so we kind of acted as ambassadors for women in science and engineering. Uh, because all of us come from, well, different countries around the world. We're not all, I mean, I'm Croatian. Uh, uh, Katja, who's with us tonight, she's German. Then we have Magda, who's Polish, and we have uh, Patricia, who's Portuguese, and so on it goes. So, uh, and when we were talking to people during these installations and talking about our research and what we do, everybody was kind of interested in the fact that, yes, you can be a woman from anywhere, and you can be into science and engineering, and you can be into hacking, and you can be doing all these kind of things. And yes, you can even be doing a PhD in it. So it's not something that's kind of a foreign. And that's, that's sort of a, that's, I guess that's kind of the most of the joy that we get out of it, that we can go out and spread the word that actually, yes, we're just women and we're doing it and we're loving it. And so you should be doing it too, if you think this is something that you like to do. But all of this, oh, before I go to our supporters, we also, another thing that we have within our department is we publish these magazines, which you can find online, which are basically for uh, secondary school or high school children to sort of find out about research that we do in the department through some sort of, a, a, I guess, simplified language. So they can understand what we do and they can maybe see themselves doing a similar sort of things one day when they grow up, as one would say. And we've written, when we, whenever we did an installation or kind of a workshop or project or some sort of a hacking project, we would write a little article with pictures and then we were submitted to our magazines. So that kind of went out to uh, all the high schools in the UK. So the young girls and boys can kind of read about this kind of a hacking into tea cloths and teapots, and et cetera, et cetera. And maybe see themselves doing something like that one day as well. So I, I guess what I wanted to say by uh, showing these is that Whatever your activity is, try not to do it in isolation. I mean, spread the word. Talk to people about what you do. If you can talk to some kids about what you do, even better. If you can write an article for a kid's magazine, super. If you can write the blog, any which way that you can do it to reach out as many people as possible because you love what you're doing, so you want to share what you're doing with everybody else. 
And of course, none of this would be possible without our sponsors. And when I say sponsors, I'm, I mean people who are kind of supported us all along the way. So Queen Mary's have been fantastic. They gave us the first grant to get uh, things going. Then, of course, we got uh, commissioned by Mistec and National Lottery to do the teapot installation. Then we got uh, commissioned by Digital Shortage. And uh, lastly, we got the platform grant from uh, Centre for Digital Music to come here and do this workshop and this talk to spread the word again. And most of us are uh, sponsored by EPSRC, which is the Research Council for uh, Sciences and Engineering uh, in UK. So they're also big thanks go to them. I hope they uh, know what they do. I'm sure they know what, what we do. <laughs> and I'm sure they're very happy about it. So yeah. Um, one, of the, one of the things, of course, so far I've talked about, so we've done this, we represented the department, we represented the school, women in sciences, uh, we've done all of these things and went and did the talk and taught other things, other people, and this is all brilliant. But at one point we decided to just evaluate and ask our own members, what exactly did you get by being in this GHEC? You know, what did you learn? And we found that, that there was kind of different responses, sort of, a, you know, a, quite a mixture. So some of the people like to share and learn new skills in sort of a, within just, you know, university. Uh, some of the people that have, like, as your PhD is a kind of a quite a solitary activity and maybe you came from your degree and never really collaborated with anybody. So you never get to share your skills in a collaborative environment. So, so, so some ladies that did that, they sort of said, yeah, I really love this collaboration. I bring to the table what I know, you bring to what you know, and we do something together. And of course, uh, some of them as well said that sort of uh, uh, coming in from the PhD environment and research environment and academia environment, when hacking is not really a subject or a module that you cover at any part of your degree necessarily, even though more and more in certain kind of arts and media programs we have this uh, through Arduino, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, they sort of said that they kind of uh, gain all these technical skills and programming that they would have never otherwise done. As well as things like, you know, just the logistics of organizing an interactive installation exhibition at the V&A. Uh, uh, and then things like, you know, things falling over, breaking, fixing things, etc. And as well as things like, you know, how do I teach somebody else how to do this? Because it's not simple. Because sometimes we work out how a piece of code works, but to teach somebody else how that works is not the same thing as us knowing it. So, uh, so, so that sort of just kind of shows you, I mean, the reason why I was kind of explaining all of this is because, I mean, this is just a little project that's been happening at a university. And any one of you guys here can start up a similar project at university, at your neighborhood, at your own local cafe, at your primary school, wherever you want to. It's really that simple. All you need to do is find a few people, get them all going, find a little bit of money for a bit of material, find some outlet where you can show your, word, your work and spread the word, and it really, it just, you just wheel it into happening. So, um, I'm also here to plug our workshop for tomorrow. So basically, at one point, because some of us were going to music hack days and doing hacking, and we kind of realized, well, where are the women? Again, the same scenario when we started G-Hack. Where are the members of G-Hack? Where are they? So we, we realized that there isn't this small percentage of women hacking in hack days. So we thought, okay, what's the new hot thing that we want to teach people? Uh, and we stumbled upon the Web Audio API, which is the standard that's been developed by a couple of companies, well, three or four, everybody actually on the web, Google, Mozilla, etc. And so we decided to first teach ourselves what is this Web Audio API, so then we can hack into it, and then we can teach other women how to actually hack into it and how to do something with it. So this is the workshop that we're running for women tomorrow. It's happening from 11.30 to 2.30. And uh, so, learn how to hack uh, web audio uh, with G-Hack. And we will be hacking into, uh, um, we would be sort of making a sound map of uh, Centre Pompidou area, like here comes Centre Pompidou, the squares around. So by the end of it, the participants will know a little bit of HTML, a little bit of JavaScript, uh, what does the audio API mean, where to look up on various kind of forums uh, and follow up the development of web audio, what to do if things go wrong, uh, how to check whether your browser is still compatible with the code, etc. And hopefully be able to go home and then kind of add on to that map, make a map of their own for their own website, for the game, whatever it is. Just kind of uh, get a little bit of insight into how it all works. So. Um, before I tell you uh, where you can sign up for it, I would just like to ask the ladies to come up so you can see what they look like because it's very important. C'est très important. Come on, Patricia. So we have Magda. 
She's a professional cello player and also hacker. We have Katya, she's an architect, hacker, and programmer, and all sorts of stuff. And we have Patricia, she's a performance artist and now a hacker as of recent. Thank you. So, uh, so yeah, so we, the four of us, will be teaching the, uh, uh, the uh, workshop tomorrow. Uh, we still have some places in the workshop. Uh, the places are going to probably close. I think the registration closes um, at 10 tonight, no. right? Oh, sorry, at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. But just in case you didn't have the time to kind of, you know, sign up or whatever, just show up tomorrow on the day at, I think we open up around 11, quarter past 11. Come and say, I've seen your talk, I want to join this workshop. Bring your laptop and go to our webpage because the Eventbrite link to sign up is very long. So this is the webpage, ghack.ex at qml.ac.uk. And on the webpage you will see this is like the first bit of blogging, and somewhere here you can see that you can register. This link will take you to the Eventbrite, where you can see all the details, how to register, where it all starts, and the, the software that you need to download. If you don't get the time to do it, we'll go through it all over again tomorrow. So uh, that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, G-Hack. <laughs>